Oh, you're, uh, you're a single cell of annoyance that yeah. has crawled out of the primordial slime and just put on a bad shirt and like a cheap tie. Good. Okay. And, uh, and, well, no, no, I got more. I got more. Um, you're um, okay. facile. Oh. You're, you're sort of imbecilic. You're ill in. What? Evolution for toddlers? And then you think, yeah, evolution for toddlers. The journal Psychological Science noted that, quote, children in preschool and early elementary school show teleological biases to explain the origins of natural objects' properties by reference to function, close quote. Boston University psychologist Deborah Kellerman conducted research attempting to get children to believe in, quote, non-goal-directed population-based process of differential survival and reproduction, close quote, a.k.a. atheistic evolution, which sought to, quote-unquote, suppress children's, quote-unquote, common sense ways and to, quote, explain why animals have function, functional traits and show signs of apparent design, close quote. And keep in mind that Francis Crick and Richard Dawkins made very explicit statements about denying the design that you see before you. Not based on what you actually see before you, but based on a world view. Kellerman wrote, quote, According to this view, then, the optimal time to begin comprehensively familiarizing children with counterintuitive scientific explanations is relatively early, during ages at which alternative common sense explanatory frameworks are still relatively fragmentary. Capitalizing on young children's drive for coherent explanations, factual knowledge, and interest in trait function, along with their affinity for picture storybooks, is a viable initial step towards overcoming conceptual pitfalls that can undermine later learning about adaptation. And keep in mind that Richard Lewontin made it very clear that one of the reasons that scientists hold to conclusions that are even counterintuitive is because we cannot allow a divine foot in the door, as he puts it. In Proverbs 8.36, the Bible states, quote, All those who hate me love death, close quote. And it is no surprise that Kellerman sought to teach children the virtues of death, telling them that death is how, quote, the selectionist mechanism, close quote, functions. 
Scott F. Gilbert and David Appel wrote that, quote unquote, death is selective. Richard Dawkins wrote, quote, in nature, the usual selecting agent is direct, stark and simple. It is the grim reaper, close quote. And Kellerman herself wrote, quote, the story is about life and death. Kids want to know what is going to happen next, close quote. So it is no wonder why atheists are desperate to indoctrinate children, to deny their natural-born instincts and embrace a world, be a world view that tells them that life, the universe, and everything is the result of a series of accidents and that death is good. Now, you kids behave! Towards this end, atheists have the entire public education system and media behind them. There are countless children's books, movies, cartoons, etc., meant to accomplish the goal we have been outlining. In fact, even so-called nature shows are saturated with evolution. Biology is a science, but evolution is a philosophy, and Darwinian evolution is a branch of cryptozoology that asserts and seeks mythological chimeras. Now, so I know you're not happy with the way uh, schooling handles the subject of evolutionary science. Um, how would you propose it, it's handled? I know you, you feel it's just, certainly in America at least, and perhaps in a lot of the Western world, not covered thoroughly enough. Yes, in Britain too. I think it doesn't start early enough. It's actually not that difficult to understand, although you wouldn't guess that. Um, I believe you could start by teaching eight-year-olds about the idea. It isn't that difficult to understand, and it's really rather tragic that children are taught n what actually amounts to nonsense. I mean, myths can be quite beautiful, but I it is actually wrong, and we do know what the truth is nowadays. And the truth is enthralling, it's beautiful, it's elegant. And so it's such a shame that children miss out on that. And there's no reason why it should be left into the middle teen years, which at least in Britain I think it is, uh, rather than being taught really early, when children are questioning, when they want to know the answer to questions. So there isn't a process, as it were, going on in the cell saying, look, be patient. No. It, it's going to be a feather, believe me. <laughs> yes. that, it doesn't happen like that. Uh, there's got to be a series of advantages all the way in, in the feather. If you can't think of one, then that's your problem, not, uh, not natural selection's problem. Natural selection, um, uh, well, I suppose that is a sort of matter of faith on my, on my mm. part, since the theory is so coherent and so, and so powerful. What Darwinism does is to raise our consciousness. What? I think it doesn't start early enough. Evolution for toddlers? I believe you could start by teaching eight-year-olds. Evolution for toddlers? Really early, when children are questioning, when they want to know the answer to questions. It's a matter of faith on my, on my mm. part. And we do know what the truth is nowadays. It's a matter of faith on my, on my mm. part. And we do know what the truth is. It's a matter of faith on my, on mm. my part. It's a matter of faith. Out of matter of faith, the faith, the true, the true, the true, out of matter of faith, the faith, the true, the true, the true, out of matter of faith, the faith, the